Welcome back. We still have a few seconds for the market to open, uh, but we have an important management. We have uh, uh, Sanjeev Chadda with us, the managing director and CEO of uh, Bank of Baroda. The Bank of Baroda reported a mixed set actually. Moratorium is pretty high if you compare it to say PNB, 65% moratorium, highest among many banks that we uh, that have announced numbers. Uh, slippages are, however, much lower. This could be because of the moratorium. Watch list has increased, uh, but uh, upgrades have uh, gone up a lot. So it's a very interesting combination. Uh, uh, Mr. Chadda, thank you very much indeed for joining us. First up, let me start with asset quality. It has shown improvement. Uh, can you give us some nuances about how the year ahead is going to look like? So uh, you're absolutely right. There's been a significant improvement uh, in the current year. Our gross NPA ratios are down by nearly 100 basis points. Net NPA is by nearly as much. Uh, the current year, of course, was challenging because uh, there were fairly uh, chunky slippages which were there. Going ahead, we might say that there are two contradictory trends. On the one side, there is going to be elevated stress on account of COVID. I think it's unarguable. On the other side, we are fortunate that we don't see as many large corporate accounts which might be under threat. So we believe that these two factors should pretty much be balancing, cancelling each other out. So even with the impact of COVID as we see it today, we would expect that our slippages during the year, they should possibly be a little lower as compared to what they were uh, in the last year. So unless uh, things change drastically over the next few months, uh, we would believe that we should be able to sustain the improvement in asset quality. Oh, that's good to hear, Mr. Chadda. If you can wait on for a minute, uh, Mr. Chadda, the market's just opened and it's really a strong opening at 0.7 higher. But I'm kind of uh, uh, doubting whether it'll be able to prevail at that level because Bajaj Finance started 10% higher, now 8.5% higher. I mean, there's nothing specific to Bajaj Finance, so I'm wondering if these gains can be sustained. But yesterday, all these stocks did go up 6-7%. Uh, 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 let's wait and see. Well, LNT had a great day yesterday that, that one is up 2.3 percent but i really want to see how asian paints is doing asian paints is flat uh, at this point in time and the it stocks are still under a bit of pressure hdfc is flat uh, well that's asian paints we'll have to wait actually for the results uh, for the numbers to settle down uh, but uh, meanwhile uh, let's uh, get some more details from uh, mr chadda of bob uh, well uh, mr chadda what is your outlook on the recovery considering lockdown and the delayed IBC process, but there have been changes in the SEBI rules as well for preferential allotment. What are you expecting in terms of recoveries this year? So I think as far as recoveries are concerned, they would be impacted by the fact that the first quarter was pretty much under lockdown. So the normal recovery efforts that you would do, they were simply not possible. Uh, so, so to that extent, one would expect that recovery were a little lower as compared uh, to the previous year, but given the, again, the overall uh, balance picture, taking into account slippages, what we believe is possible on the corporate side, the fact that we believe that agriculture should remain in reasonably robust space, the fact that the MSME book should be helped by the guaranteed line which you are make, making available to borrowers, on balance, mm -hmm. we believe we should still be able to uh, keep the asset quality in control, and if we are lucky, to improve it a little bit. All right, Mr. Chetta, good morning. So because of the situation, uh, what about slippages? How, how much could the slippages be and what could the worst case scenario look like? Uh, so I, I think we, you mentioned uh, about the uh, the RBI determines has come. So that is something which we want to do. I think it's a little early uh, in the cycle to have an assessment which might stand the test of time. So I think maybe two months down the line, we should be in a better position to assess that what would be the worst case scenario if there's an optimistic scenario what it would look like but what i can speak to you today is about a base case scenario which would seem to suggest yes there is going to be stress uh, there is going to be elevated stress in the retail book as compared to what are historical levels but that may be balanced out by some kind of uh, ability for us to control credit quality in other segments Okay, could you give us more details of how much of the loan book is under moratorium now and how much of those moratorium loans could slip into NPAs? So I think we had uh, gone on record to uh, the, the, saying that about 65% of our book is uh, under moratorium and this is in terms of value. 
the reason for that is that when it comes to our retail loans, uh, we do not have a system whereby there are standing instructions issued by borrowers where their saving bank accounts are debited and then it comes to the loan account. In our system, we actually pull out money from the savings mm. accounts. So since we had an opt-out clause, we have not been uh, doing that. But having said that, the moratorium has been coming down because uh, our borrowers are conscious of the fact that there is a interest cost which is there. The 65% is down to about 55% when it comes to May. Going ahead, okay. we actually have said that only for our smaller borrowers, we'll have an opt-out clause. For the others, we'll give them the option of opting in. And we believe that if our effective moratorium should on that account come down significantly, as of now, our prognosis is that it should be by August look near about 35% of the book. Okay, uh, Mr. Chada, how much provisions have you taken against these moratorium accounts? Is it 5% or 10%? So, the, the, the accounts where again the RBI dispensation applied, where there is a standstill that there would not be any slippage. Uh, that book is about 4,000 crores. So those are the SMA2 accounts which okay. skipped uh, as of March 31st. So for that 4,000 crores, RBI said that you can provide 5% this quarter and 5% next quarter. We have elected okay. to actually provide 20% of that. So the reason again is that as against the 15% that banks are supposed to provide as per RBI norms uh, for substandard assets, BOB has a very conservative policy and we provide 20%. So we have gone ahead and provided 20% on that entire amount. Oh. Okay, that's good to hear. Actually, the uh, stock is getting a thumbs up from uh, uh, the market as well, Mr. Chadda. Uh, the opening rates in BOB are pretty strong, I think 5% higher. Uh, what do you, do you think this amount that you have set aside, you said 20%, will be adequate to cover any stress that you may get from that pool? This is only in respect of accounts which benefited from the sanction. And so we have provided fully for those as you would for any substandard asset. In fact, out of those 4,000 crores, 1,500 crores has uh, actually come back. But nevertheless, we have provided only full 4,000 crores. But you're absolutely right. That is not the entire book. But uh, to the extent that we believe that slippages should be equal to or lower as, our, as per a current estimate as compared to what they were last year, although things could of course change. But as per a current estimate, that is what the position is. So therefore, we did not see the requirement to provide extra for that. Okay, uh, just a word more on asset quality. Where does the watch list stand now? Uh, believe there has been some increase? So the watch list was in the region of about 10,000 crores in the last quarter. Now it stands at about 12,500, 12,700 crores. That is largely on account of one uh, large uh, uh, loan or a group of loans in an international book which has come under some stress. So we have gone ahead and put that on watch list. And how much of this may slip you think? Uh, you're factoring in any slippages from the corporate accounts? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, so if, if uh, so, our total slippages were in the region of about 19,000 crores uh, last year. We expect okay. them to be lower this year, but the 12,500 crores in the corporate book is certainly a subset. Not that the entire amount would slip, but yes, that is part of the book which is vulnerable. Okay, well now let me come to another issue. Uh, you have board approval in place to raise capital. Uh, how soon will you uh, go to the market and any amount in mind, what's your requirement? So our board approval is something that we take every year, anticipating what could be likely capital requirement uh, either for growth or on account of any impairments that might be there. So we are currently looking at about 7% growth in our loan book for the current year. Our approval is to raise up to 13,000 uh, crores, 13,500 crores. Of that, 4,500 crores is likely to be for 81. So that is something which we might be in the market for in the July to September quarter. As far as pure equity is concerned, that would pretty much depend upon market conditions. I do not anticipate that for the first half of the year. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, Mr. Chadda, you may be delighted to know that the market's pretty happy with the answers you're giving and the stock is up almost 10%. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us with your thoughts. We will touch base when we have a little more time. Uh, at the moment, market's doing fine. Bajaj Finance 